everyone. I'm Aaron Brooks from the ISBA Committee on Legal Technology, and we're continuing our discussion about eFile Illinois and the new expanded remote access policy that became effective on March 1st. So this is part three of a three-part video series, and we're going to put the link to the first two videos down in the description below. So please check those out. And with me again is Trent Bush, also from the Committee on Legal Technology. And I've got Ryan Mackin and Chase Adams from Tyler Technologies, uh, who's the platform provider for this entire system. So welcome back, everyone. Hello. Hello, lawyer. Thank you. <laughs> so in, in this video, we, we really kind of want to talk about the big picture vision for this whole system. And so I'm going to turn it over to Ryan to walk us through kind of where we've been, how we got here, and uh, you know, where you see this whole thing going over at least the next year or two. All right, thanks, Aaron. And uh, to get started, I will go ahead and just show a quick timeline of, of where we've been and, and where we're headed in regards to our e-filing portals. So can you all see my screen okay? We can. All right, so um, as we all know, technology is constantly evolving. When we talk about Tyler's e-filing portals, it began back in 2000 uh, with, this, with a product called WizNet. Um, as technology evolved in 2011, we released, released a new portal uh, with a foundation built on Silverlight. Um, that technology is actually being deprecated by Microsoft and no longer supported in October 21st. Uh, but in 2013, we released another filing portal based on the technology known as HTML5. Um, so that product has been live in eFile Illinois for quite some time now. Uh, we've been running the, the two portals, one on Silverlight and one on HTML5, but it's well past time for the new evolution and new technology. Um, so here as of um, January 1st, 2021, um, a new cloud-based e-filing portal was made available on eFile Illinois. Um, Cook County is still working through some custom features, uh, but we do look to enable their locations very soon on the new portal. Um, it is cloud-based technology, and I do want to make a comment that we will have the HTML site operating concurrently with the new portal um, as we do learn about the new product and, and learn from uh, you, the filing community, on your experiences with the new product to continue to evolve it. Um, we will, however, eventually arrive at a date uh, where we no longer support the HTML5 site, uh, but we don't have that on the roadmap uh, now. So the date to remember would be October 21st. That is when Silverlight will no longer be supported. Uh, then we'll have the two optional portals, our HTML5 and our cloud-based portal. Um, so I'll talk to a little bit about the details of the cloud-based portal. And Ryan, could I just ask yeah. a question for you know some of us who aren't sort of up on some of the technical lingo? When you say the HTML5 site versus Silverlight, is it fair to say that we're we're kind of saying uh, moving from something that's kind of um, application based, or you have to install something, or there you know there's an applet involved versus something that just works purely with a standard web browser like Chrome? Is that kind of a rough way to say it? Yes, that's a, a good way to think about it, specifically for the Silverlight application. The Silverlight application is definitely older technology. Um, the, the new technology, and when I do say cloud-based, that means everything from um, the servers uh, underlying it and, and everything that is operating the portal so that we'll be able to, um, you know, in busier times of the day, throttle up servers and increase server capacity for a better filing experience regardless of the filing load. Um, and then in the evenings, then we have the ability to throttle back um, so that we still have a smooth filing experience for the filers uh, and just better management overall of the technology. So uh, there's actually a, a lot of underlying technology that we don't see um, in the UI or the user interface that we can take advantage of. Um, that does lead me to another point that, that I actually don't have in the slide. Um, we're gonna be able to deliver fixes more quickly and timely to the filing community because this portal will be uh, in a sense operating independently from the clerk review applications. Today, anytime we need to take an upgrade to the filing portals for any issues, we have to operate in coordination and conjunction with all 102 trial courts and the courts of review to schedule that downtime and take the upgrades. Now in the future application, we'll be able to deploy fixes new features directly to the filing portal and not have to touch the clerk review environment at all. So that's another benefit for quicker resolution to issues that the, the filing community may see. Yeah, so kind of less downtime and maybe even better for the environment because you can spin it up when it needs to, you know, take a lot of power and then roll it back when it's not busy. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Um, so that actually does transition me to some of the, the comments on the next slide that we have. Um, so here, just a few brief highlights of, of the portal. It is a new intuitive layout. Um, when I say that, it, it does follow more of a TurboTax style wizard mode of e-filing to help walk through the filings in a more intuitive nature uh, than you may be used to on the current portals. Um, this will share the login credentials with eFile Illinois. So much like we mentioned in the previous research Illinois videos, you don't have to do any new registration. You don't have to do any initial setup. Um, all you need to know is your email and your password that you've registered with on eFile Illinois, and the new portal will function for you. Um, it is um, compliant um, with the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act. So that's another feature that um, we want to get this portal available for those um, who may be disabled. Um, and then we also have advanced um, customized content that we're going to be able to provide. So um, that will continue to grow as we learn from the new portal, but we're going to have the ability to deliver help content in specific areas of the application, as well as our new knowledge center that will actually live on the screen for interactive chatting with our agents, as well as access to, to knowledge articles. Um, and then as we just mentioned briefly, faster turnaround on in incident management, um, that's a combination of access to um, our support teams and that Zendesk tool. It's a, it's a best of breed support tool that, that Tyler uses. Um, and then the, the delivery of code fixes now will be a quicker turnaround for the filing community um, without having to get, gain approvals and coordination with the courts all across the state. So to access the new portal right now, um, it is in its early stages. Uh, from the current eFile Illinois website, um, there's a section uh, where it says new filer portal available. You can click here. Um, today, we are recording as of April 8th. Um, so the locations of Cook County are not available. Um, we are working to deliver some custom features for Cook. Those should be available um, very soon, um, within a few weeks uh, from this recording and Cook County will be available there. Um, so I, I do look forward to an opportunity to to have some more um, video series and, and content to show more application demonstration, uh, but just wanted to, to lay out the, where we're headed with the new portal. Outstanding. Kind of add on to this, um, as far as the access to the new filer portal is concerned, uh, when the time comes and when it's appropriate, and the filing community will be made aware of when that change happens, but our filenow.me website that we uh, offer as a shortcut, as we mentioned in previous videos, uh, that will update to reflect the new filer portal. Uh, here in the near future. So it, it may be a little while before that change happens, but uh, when it does, that will be another way for you to be able to access that site more, more easily. Yeah, and Aaron, if I could just throw in here, you know, um, whenever we talk about, you know, change is constant, especially with technology, right? So we have to think about, you and I have served on the Committee on Legal Technology for like 20 years, or at least it's felt like 20 years. And, and when we first started, you know, we were just, you know, chopping at the bit for electronic filing. And so here we went from, you know, 2011 to really just having the discussions and a few disparate type systems to now a unified system in 2018, uh, to now remote access to, to improved e-filing uh, platforms. So um, you know, anytime someone mentions change, you know, in my office, anywhere in any legal office in the world, I'm sure everybody's uh, eyes just kind of uh, get wide and they clench their fists. But uh, the, 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 the move is to more intuitive systems. Um, these systems are running in parallel right now as a filer. I think it's always a good practice while you do have an opportunity um, before you get pushed off the plank and you have to figure it out. I think it's always a good idea to start uh, poking around and trying to figure it out. Uh, whether it be if you're the filer uh, yourself as the attorney or your support staff, you know, take a little bit of time, get familiar with the updates before, uh, before the last minute. So just kind of an overall, what I think to be a better practice and less stressful uh, transition. Yeah, you know, thanks for saying that. And and I do remember those early days on Colt, you know, it, and we'd be at these conferences talking about e-filing. How, how's it going to happen? How are you going to get this done? All the barriers and the difficulties. And that was sort of the um, kind of the early days, if not really pre, you know, cloud computing in general. And so, 
you know, to, to look from where we were then to, to how this system works now and, and how, you know, easy things are, it's, it's really amazing. So, um, and we always talk about this when we do technology seminars in general um, for the Committee on Legal Technology that you, you want to try not to get frustrated with technology. You know, you want to try to remember to be grateful for, you know, how easy it makes our life in a lot of ways, you know, how, how many advantages we have and kind of be curious about how it works rather than confused or frustrated, you know, get to know it. And at the same time, uh, I, I think inherent in your message is kind of be patient with it because this is complicated, right? There's, there's going to be some bumps in the road. We're still working things out. And we've said in prior videos that this is, uh, you know, this is a process that's going to continue for at least a couple more years as, as this gets rolled out. Yep. And, and the reality is we've got now a central, uh, which is what the filer's dream was, right? Not to have 102 different filing environments, but we've got one centralized portal to do it. Now, there are gobs and gobs of systems under, under the surface that thankfully the filer doesn't have to worry about or frankly care about um, as long as the you know, the document gets from uh, the attorney's um, uh, computer to the clerk and is accepted, you know, that's, that's what we care about, right? So, um, you know, we've got the easy part as filers, even though it may feel, even with change, that it's, uh, it's a little cumbersome. Um, all of those systems and all of the work that goes on behind the background, whether it's Tyler or the clerks or, or the AOIC or whatever, um, they make all those systems work together. We get, we get to really enjoy the fruits of that labor. For sure. Well, uh, so this is the end of our uh, three-part series. We may do some more videos in the future, but for now, uh, please go back and check out the first two videos if you haven't seen them. Uh, take a look in the program description because we're going to put links to those videos as well as some FAQs and a lot of kind of deeper dive uh, helpful information from Tyler Technologies. So I just want to thank uh, Trent Bush from uh, Committee on Legal Technology. This was uh, kind of his uh, vision. He pulled this together and made it happen. So Trent, thank you very much for doing that. And I also want to thank our friends from Tyler Technology, uh, Ryan Matkin and Chase Adams, and in previous videos, uh, Philip Vaden. So uh, very, very kind of them to uh, take the time to uh, do this with us. So, uh, Aaron, before, bef before you sign off, I know you were sure. just about ready to do that, but I do want to, I, I do want to encourage people, um, if you've got questions, concerns, ideas for um, how things aren't working or how you want them to work, reach out to somebody. And there's different ways to do that. We talked just a little bit about that in one of the earlier videos, but a great way to do that is through an association that you're involved with. Obviously, the ISBA um, would be a great one. Uh, reach out to the members of the Committee on Legal Technology if you're members of other associations. You know, a collective voice a lot of times gets heard uh, more quickly than maybe individual voices. So utilize those resources to try to make things better. And I can tell you my, my experience as serving on the advisory board is that those that those, uh, those ideas get brought to decision makers quickly. So reach out to them, reach out to the folks on the advisory board, make those suggestions. And you just might see the improvements take place pretty quickly after you come up with the um, uh, way to communicate them. Absolutely. And if you're an ISBA member, join the the committee on legal technology, you know, sign up for that. I think it's you know twenty or thirty dollars. It's it's not very expensive, and you'll get our newsletter, and you'll uh, keep up to date with what we're doing, and uh, then you can participate in the ISBA uh, online community. And I can tell you when when we get an email. Uh, you'll you'll get multiple responses. You know, people are very interested on on this committee, uh, and they they love talking to lawyers about technology. That's that's why we serve on the committee. So, um, all right. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks for watching. Check out the links below, and we'll see you in the next video.